reason you know why you do it, and you're not just doing it because that's the only way you know how to do. That's not just the only access, that's not the only way you know how to access that movement pattern. So that was the deadlift. We're gonna do a couple reps now. So I wanna see everybody do some deadlifts. We're gonna go at a controlled pace, but we're not gonna hold any particular pace. So I'm gonna set the timer, two hand deadlifts. You're gonna to come to the top, stand up nice and tall, come right back down, hold for just a second. Same thing, back and forth. So you're just gonna hold the top, hold the bottom for just about a half second. And we'll make sure everybody looks good. All right, ready? Grab your bell. I don't know, Ethan, if you can deadlift, so let's see it. Set and go. Making sure at that top position we're not bending backwards. Aaron might be calling you out via your chat. Making sure a nice neutral neck position. Holding those shoulders back. Bell has a nice vertical pass, so it's coming right in between your feet, not too far out in front of you. The further that bell goes out in front of you, the more pressure we're putting on the lumbar. Making sure we're not getting into any kind of cervical extension, so we're not tucking or we're not uh, pulling our neck back, pulling our head back. Almost there, 12 seconds. And time. Fantastic. All right, so we started off with that deadlift hover. We then broke down the deadlift into different pieces. We started to add some controlled movement. So now we're going to speed things up a little bit. And so I love getting into the explosive deadlift because it's a great bridge to the swing, but I like to break it down even further with that explosive deadlift. So the thing with the explosive deadlift is that most people think they have to leave the ground. So now we're taking a potential, we're adding potential injury to this just because they might not understand how to control that drop. The only reason for the explosive deadlift is now we want to accelerate the movement, but do it in a safe context. Because with this swing, we are still gonna break down the swing, but there's a lot of different ways that that can go wrong. So with the explosive deadlift, now we can play around with this and we can add in pauses. So from a client standpoint, they're just doing a deadlift, they're doing the same movement pattern as the rest of my clients doing swings, but I'm gonna be able to give them different speeds. So the way we're gonna break this down is into three parts. The first is going to be just a fast concentric. So we're just gonna be focusing, you can just watch it first. It's just gonna be, so we're gonna start from the hover and it's just going to be a very fast pull. So we're learning how to load that pull, but we have a stopping point. So we're not worrying about the drop because when you see people doing swings, what tends to hurt them is the drop. So if we can focus on just that drive, pause for a second, slow back down. Then we're gonna do a fast concentric and eccentric, but still keeping feet on the ground. So then we're gonna do, so now we learn how to decelerate a weight without letting go of all the tension. So every time I'm doing flows or ballistic work, it's not about the kettlebell controlling me or me following the kettlebell. It's about me being in control of that deceleration and understanding how everything has to communicate. Finally, we'll go into a full extension where we're gonna jump. All right. We're gonna jump and then come back down. Same idea, that's going to allow me to understand that top of the movement and again, how to decelerate quickly while still maintaining tension. So for a client, let's say for a new client that doesn't understand that, what are they gonna do? When they see a kettlebell, a ballistic kettlebell movement, they typically think that bell is just pulling them down. But we're being active with it. We're actively pulling that bell down, whether we're swinging, snatching, rotationally cleaning, doesn't matter, we're being very active with this. So for the deadlift, it's just a way to reinforce that for our client to understand those positions. So first one's first. Go ahead and get into your kettlebell. We're out of time, love it. We're gonna hold on to the bell, get nice and low. So here we're just gonna have that bell hover, so shins are vertical, hips are back, knees are back. Should be feeling that on the hamstrings. All we're gonna do is we're going to actively, explosively drive our hips forward, stand up nice and tall, and then pause. So 
from here. We're going to pull and then hold for just a second. All right, ready? In the hover and pull. So stay up tall, stay right there for a second. Make sure when you got to that position, did you lock out your knees? Did you hyperextend at your knees or did you engage your glutes and straighten your legs versus locking out the knees, which is what most people will do? Did you get into that posterior tilt, that squeeze of the glutes? So, so, so crucial. All right, unlock, back to hover. Hold for a second. When I say pull, you're gonna explode, very set, pull. Nice. Squeeze the glutes and keep those shoulders back. Chest is nice and proud. Ready, set, pull back. Let's go one more. And pull. Back down and relax. So now we're understanding how to accelerate through the weight, accelerate under load, but do it in a safe context. From there, we'll go into the accelerated concentric and eccentric. So there will not be a pause until the bottom again. So once we start from the hover, we're gonna pull, release, then wait. So it's gonna look like this. Shoulders back, lats engaged, breaking that bell in half. I'm going to pull, release, pull, release. So coming right back into position. So I'm understanding on that release, on that eccentric, as I'm dropping down, I'm actively driving my hips back. I'm not just letting the weight pull me down and then I break structure. I'm trying to drive and pull back down. I'm trying to drive and pull back up. Okay, so I'm always maintaining a lot of tension. All right, we'll see everybody do this. So go ahead and grab your belt. Go ahead and let that bell hover now. Just an inch or so off the ground. Make sure your chin is slightly tucked, so nice neutral neck position. So from the base of your spine through the crown of your head is one straight line, don't be looking up. Try to listen to the cues without having to look over. When I say you're going to explode by pulling up and then coming right back to this position. Ready, set, go. And then hold that bottom. Very nice. Ready, set, pull. Pull. Hold that bottom. Pull the shoulders back. Pull. When I say, I want you to give me five as fast as you can. Ready, set, go. Five as fast as you can. Hips back, hips back, knees back. And relax. Very nice. Okay, bring it in. So when you start to accelerate that, and you start to accelerate, and you start to feel that deceleration, when you're focusing on it, what did that? How did that feel different from maybe doing explosive deadlifts from before? Anybody? See that one more time. So when you're focusing on that deceleration versus just letting the bell drop, how did that feel differently from other times that you might have just done explosive deadlifts? How could you, how could you transfer that, that feeling to your client? What do you think they're going to feel as they do that? Humbling. Nice. Norma, go for it. Um, there you go. Well, one of the things 